do companies care about gamers? I don't know, guys. What do you think? Um, I'm still hung up with the companies and all the things I've, uh, I'm witnessing every day online, articles I'm reading. I'm losing my trust in the companies and to the magazines and information websites out there. When I'm reading articles, I'm watching YouTube videos about gaming. Um, it is getting weirder, weirder and weirder. I don't even know if that's a word, actually. It gets really weird as, as I keep looking more into things. And I'm starting to really kind of subscribe to the expression ignorance is bliss. Honestly, I think it's better than me reading things because are you looking at a game and you play it free to play, pay to win that we talked last three, last uh, podcast, uh, you know, whatever the category of the economical model they're using is. And you're thinking this is a bad game. It has this, this is wrong with this, this is wrong with this, this is wrong with this. And not just because, you know, I'm weird, but you're looking at reviews on different platforms and forums and, uh, you know, wherever people can express themselves about leaving their comments about the game and you get something like 65, 70% negative reviews and comments, then, you know, I'm not crazy, basically, you know. And um, do they care or do they just care how much money they're going to get? Do they care about the quality of life of gamers anymore? Like they used to, you know, there used to be a great support you know, you contact support and you get an answer. I don't know what happens these days. And also, you know, just to start with, they don't trust the reviews anymore. Goes uh, to the point that you notice uh, people saying negative things about the game and then they give it thumbs up. You notice reviews on YouTube where you start watching it and they really praise the game and what you can find in the game and how nice the game is. And then you look in the comments or the end of the stream and say, thank you very much for the sponsors. And the sponsor of the video is the game itself. So basically, if you take money from the company that owns the game, of course, your review is not going to be negative. That would be kind of like suicidal for the person doing the review. Same goes for articles online. And then it makes me wonder, can I trust the other reviews from this person? For other games, does it always tell us that it's sponsored or not? You know, it could because you could have taken money and don't say it's sponsored and then gives a good review and should be giving a bad review. I mean, the guy is doing the job trying to make money and live and whatever. I'm not going to judge that. But do I trust anything they they record? Do I trust anything they write? I don't know. And that, and that is like, that goes over to the companies that I want to talk about because... They are misleading us through that to buy their game and try and convince us to sell money. But do they care about the quality of life, the quality of gaming? I really don't think so. But how can we tell if a company cares about the players, not the players, but the quality of the gaming they provide to players and the quality of life? You may be wondering, what do I mean by quality of life? I mean, things like being protected by harassment, be protected by hacking and um, uh, abuse or mechanics in the system, um, being protected by, I don't know, advertisement, gold spammers, bots, all those things that affect your gameplay and therefore the quality of the gameplay and affect your gaming quality life. Um, I don't know if there's a system that you can check, but personally, I allow me the term devise the way to check how much a company cares about the gamers and the players um, based on how easy it is for the gamer, for the player to access certain uh, information and to access or have access into reporting all those things that I just mentioned, how easy he or she can report those things. Um, from looking at their websites, how easy it is to navigate websites, how easy it is to get the game, uh, and why would that be important for the quality of life? Because you can design a website to be very easy and useful for you as a developer, but a little bit more tedious for the gamer, or you can design it to be very easy for the customer, the gamer, the player, 
and be a little bit more tedious for you to do things. Um, there will be some generalizations as we go along. Of course, not all companies or anything like that, but I'm just trying to get some points across. So if we start with them websites, you can go to a website and you want to download a game. So you're going to see a nice little big button that says download game. Let me just say something because I just recently realized this. It says download game. I haven't really I thought about it recently uh, and I've never actually downloaded any game by clicking download game. I don't know if you guys have. Because what you download is not an executable file to install the game, therefore download the game. You're actually downloading an installer which you're going to install, and then that is going to download the game for you. And I was just wondering, you know, silly as it may be, why they don't say download installer, but download game. You don't actually download a game. And I would say, that is the first lie they're telling me. They're telling me, click here to download the game, which in reality, I'm not. <laughs> they're already lying to me. Uh, second, when it comes to websites is, of course, you can to play any game these days, being online and all that, you're going to need an account. So you can download the game sometimes if you don't make the account. Personally, I would prefer if I can download the installer, install the game, and when I run it, it says you need an account. Of course, you know, it doesn't affect really the fact that you're going to make an account, whether you make it first and then download or first download and do it. But I would like the freedom to download the game and then make the account. And then we go into the account creation in some, some games. This, this that I'm going to describe to you right now is very rare. Usually it's a bit shorter, but it has occurred. And I have experienced this. It pissed me off. And uh, what you do is you click sign up. Then you put your email. You put some, sometimes they ask you for like your age and all this. Then you click sign up and you're going to get this little capsule thingy with a lot of photos that you might have to solve two or three of them, which is annoying. And when you do that, you're thinking, yeah, okay, I can download this. But no, no, you have to first go and validate your email. So you open up your browser and you go to your emails and you say, yep, click here, validate. And you're thinking, yeah, I can download now. But no, it redirects you over to the website. And then they start asking you for like your address and this and that and postal codes and all this. It's very rare, I say again, but <laughs> this has happened to me. And then you spend that 10, 15 minutes doing that. And then they say, fine, now we're done. And then you click done. Crap! There's a freaking thing popping up on your screen with a freaking survey. And like, no, skip this. It's an extra move as well. And um, you're good. Then you start downloading the game, right? And you're excited. You're like, yeah, I'm done with all this crap. Now I'm going to download this. You install this installer little thingy. It starts downloading things. In the meantime, of course, you get all this uh, information on your installer about the game and updates and patches and upcoming games and ads and whatever. And uh, it downloads the game, installs the game, and it says, click here to play. And you're thinking, yes, this is the moment I've been waiting for. And you click play. And there's a freaking window pop up on the installer and says, validating files. Like, what the f is this? Well, you can't do anything. You're just waiting for this thing to validate. I mean, I would have thought install. It would automatically do the validation before it hyped me to click play. Anyways, you wait for this. Uh, it finishes and says, click here to play. You're like, okay, there has to be nothing else here. I'm going to play. And you click play. And there's this freaking pop-up window comes up and says, checking for updates. Update found. Downloading update. And I'm like, I don't know what to break right now. You know? And you're thinking they could, I just downloaded this installer. They could have incorporated this update into the file. So don't have to do it. Anyways, it is a 30 gig update, so you wait the 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on your connection, to download, and then automatically goes into validation again, and then says, after an hour, click here to play, and then you can go and play the game. And you go into the freaking game, dudes, and the servers are down, not for maintenance, it's just down. You know, I don't know. This is, this is a story that usually it doesn't happen. It has happened to me twice um, in games. So that is a company I don't want to deal with because they're doing everything wrong. They're just playing with my time.
you know? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's easier for them to put a link to the updates and keep downloading them individually rather than, you know, compile them into one file. I, you know. Then uh, we go to see what happens in-game. All right, and we talked about if they care about our quality of life, depending how easy it is for us to access. Now, there are two distinct categories in this. There are the things we can access uh, which would improve our quality of life into the game, which have a benefit for the company and those that have not so many benefits for the company. Let's start with the ones that uh, have a big benefit for the companies just to show how easy is to access those right to check the accessibility is those things that they care in order to show later on how they don't care about things that are uh, interested to players so the microtransaction shops which these days exist in pretty much every game is the most easy thing to access because uh, you can access it almost instantaneously in any game escape from menu click shop two two moves you in there to shop and spend your money or um, even less one click when they keep dropping little flashy boxes on the bottom right bottom left middle of your screen saying you know uh, check out the shop or offer of the day you have two hours to buy this and then you know half an hour later there's only two hours left to buy this and then half an hour later um one hour left 30 minutes 10 minutes left Go buy now. You're running out of time. You know, the pressure is there. And the only thing you have to do is click the, the little button that says offer or buy, and you instantly go there. Of course, that also ruins the gameplay experience when every half an hour or every hour, you have to click the big freaking X on the top right of that window to close it. And imagine how annoying that's going to be. You're killing a boss and pff, a window pops up on your freaking screen. Uh, not all games have that, but it is out there as an example of not caring about your quality of life and quality of gaming when they pop up all these little things. Even if it's a little tiny flashy window on the bottom right of your screen or bottom left, which doesn't affect what you're doing in the game so much, your eye is still going to catch it, your your mind is still going to go and see it, and you might wonder what it is, what, you know, you want to click it to do something else. Um, so that is very easy, very fast accessible the other thing you can access very fast in a game is reporting bots which usually you can either if they um if you play a game that it's broken down into regions and everybody shows up on the chat right click on the chat report bot or click the actual character avatar in the game and uh right click on the option report bot two moves very fast this affects the company massively both on you know server uh server load and things like that and also affects a little bit the players when you have a lot of bots they farm your mobs they farm your materials and you know you have to wait for the respawn therefore creating a bad gaming experience therefore worse quality of life in the game so that's easy to report. The other thing it is very easy to report, which also affects companies, is spammers in the chat, which, you know, you're trying to have a chat with somebody or ask for advice and the chat just keeps flashing, but people are spamming from advertisement, for selling gold and this and that. Right click, report spammer, most games. Um, that affects the, the developers as well. If they are trying to moderate a channel, not through PMs, but... On that, then all these messages disappear. So that affects the company as well. Easy access. And finally, we have, which is on the interest of the company as well, we have uh, gold farmers, gold sellers, and all that. That is a priority for them because they definitely want you to buy things from the shop um, instead of using in-game money. So having gold farmers is a bad thing. Right-click, report them, you're done. So all those things we've mentioned so far, it's easy to access from one click to two, maybe three clicks in the game, which improve partially your quality of life and a lot the things the companies want. But what happens when you want to report a hacker and exploit um, an abuser on the game mechanisms and things like that? As in real life, so in games, you need to have proof. Unfortunately, or thank God, 
games are not meant to be like real life. They're meant to be more fun, more easy. Because you're there to relax after work, have some fun, enjoy yourself. Not a job as a lawyer. So if you want to report a hacker or a, an exploit or anything like that, you can't just go in the game as you did before and go right click report suspected i'll use this word because that word should say suspected hacker or suspected exploit right and in my opinion it should be that easy right click suspect hack suspect uh, exploit and what should happen is either pop up a little window and say what the hack was or what the exploit was and just leave it there all right now, why I should say suspected? Because a lot of people not aware of all the mechanisms in the game, and I had that, I was reported for that, because you may have took a character and you designed it to be full of HP, for example, it doesn't die easy, or you know you can use like a PvP potion and a normal potion and a shield potion and all this to extend your life in combat, where the player reporting you doesn't know this, only uses one, and he's like, who? Oh, he healed three times, what's going on? Um, that's why I suspect it. However, it should be easy to be reported. And I would, uh, personally, what I would have done is, if somebody was reported for hacking or exploits, uh, of course, pop up a window and say what the exploit is, so you have an idea, of course, as a developer to look into it. Or, just don't do anything about it and wait until make a point system if like 20 people or 10 people five people whatever you feel is the right number report a person for exploiting or hacking or anything like that then you know spend the resources to look into it not just every time somebody says something but maybe a point system if you're reported four five ten times then the company will actually spend time to look into it to make sure that those accusations are legit Personally, I prefer the point system with the little window popping up. It's fast and easy, uh, you know, uh, speed hack, wall hack, just, just that. You don't need anything else to do. And then the player would feel good that he's done his job to pr protect his own game and quality of life. And the company doesn't spend the resources immediately unless, you know, it's a validated action to take. But what does happen in that situation is that they force you some games to go outside of the game, right? So in game you say, right click, support, um, report hacker. Okay, there we go, click. It goes, it takes you over to the website and then ah, the frustration starts. You stop playing your game because you're already out of the game. And then, so quality of life in game is gone. You're outside of the game. And then you start running through things saying, what would you like to report? Uh, drop down menu, uh, hacking. Uh, which part of the game, the hiking, you know, combat, PvE, auction house, whatever, click that. Then you go underneath there and says, please provide a short description of the problem. Uh, I don't know, he was killing me all the time when he wasn't losing any life. We had six people hitting him. I suspect he was hiking on God mode or whatever. And then you go to the next window and says, please provide evidence, photo, video. And it's like, seriously? I have to play a game and have a record button somewhere? You know, couldn't you just check the log or the combat log or something? You have the name of the character, you have the name of my character, you know, you're recording everything. I mean, we record in everyday life from cameras. Are you telling me you can't find a combat log with this and check how the damage was distributed? You know, how many of you play and you have a button on your computer um, to record or screenshot immediately anything you see. Plus, screenshot, it won't work in this case because you're not showing someone standing on top of a building that he shouldn't be. We're talking about damages and all that, so you should have a video for the combat. How many of you run a game and then you have something like free bandit cam to record your cameras or, you know, screen recorders uh, at the whim? Go, record before the combat just in case somebody's going to hack. I mean, you realize someone is hacking and cheating after the combat. How the hell are you going to record that? I don't know. Unless you try and track the person down and get your ass kicked again and again in order to record the perfect video for them. So the point, the point system, it would be a lot easier if he's constantly being reported. Same thing with spammers and, and things like that. So th we don't have any good access when it comes to that to improve. So I don't feel this company cares because if they going to look into these issues, they have to spend money because they have to spare the people to look into it and they want to spend money. They're just going to grab our money. Then um, when it comes down to harassment, 
I'm talking about player-to-player -player harassment as well. It's also very difficult to report shit. Like, seriously. Um, or they pretend they care about this kind of thing. I mean, look recently, um, the date of this podcast, what's going on with Blizzard? Harassment in-game, harassment in the company, harassment this, harassment that. Um, it's not very easy to report it. You can't just go escape menu, report harassment. You still have to go through the whole process of what is harassment, what they do, record this, audio, video, proof, 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 proof. I mean, it's a game. It should be a little bit more easy or at least try and have some people, you know, more uh, under supervision, you know, check the logs every now and then or whatever. Um, but they don't care. They pretend they care, though, sometimes because you will notice in, in some games what they do is you have all these lovely emotes especially on PvP games, where you have things like make a rude gesture, uh, slit their throats, chicken emote, uh, spit on their faces, slap on their faces, and so on and so forth, which are, we can be considered, at least visually, harassment. And then a company comes and say, you know, it becomes a big issue, a lot of people report this and that, and they go into it to do that, and they, instead of... Uh, removing all the emotes that have been reported as harassment by players and what they consider harassment, they remove one of them, and now they have this excuse to say, but we took measures, we removed one of them. What about the other five? <laughs> you know? What about the other five? I keep getting harassed. Or people PMing uh, or sending emails in the game, people saying, oh, you suck, uh, you should quit the game, you uninstall this, you don't know how to play, all this toxicity on the community, which is harassment. And uh, you report harassment, say, this person is harassing me on the chat, he's telling me quit the game, uninstall this. Imagine if, if that is a child. I mean, for me, being an adult, pff, I've been through <laughs> these things so many times, and most of you guys, we, we don't even care. We know the trick. Right-click, block, and ignore the little bastard. But... If it's a child, it can be a problem. And I would definitely would like comments to be a bit more proactive on that. And it calls the GM or, you know, fills the harassment form outside of the whole game and all this. And then they ask for proof. I mean, hold on a second. I've just been harassed and you want me to, uh, while I'm frustrated, angry, disappointed, dropping into depression, because some people are that sensitive, yes. You want me to, what? find a moment of clarity and screenshot the chat Are you telling me you don't have a record of the chat i'm giving you the date and the time the harassment happened and you know the server and all these details and you can look into a log file yeah you definitely don't care about me so there you go uninstall um i see that quite often i mean th this was triggered with the whole situation in blizzard to be honest this whole thing inside me about this but i've been to other games that they make it really hard for you to report like i said before gold gold farmers bots uh verbal harassment in-game harassment uh and things like that you need all this proof which physically when it's happening you're not going to have a record button ready you're not going to have a screenshot button ready you're frustrated you're angry and they're they're asking you for all these things which they don't ask you, like a person comes in and talk to you to at least feel, you know, cared for. There is this automated system with drop down menus. Report this, yes. Did that happen? Yes, no, then move to this. If that, then this. I feel like I'm talking to a bot, man, you know, that doesn't give a shit. Um, and the, the accessibility is really hard. Leave my game to go to a website and fill a 10 pages long uh, form. Most people say, you know what, screw this, this game is toxic, let's quit it and go, because they can't be asked to do that. Asking people to spend their free time, that they're there to relax and have fun, and they want to protect their own, the game they play, to spend 20 minutes on forums and stuff like that, they're not going to do it. They want to spend the time more creatively and having more fun, so either they're going to quit the game, uh, which the game could be very good, there's a lot of good games out there, who are being destroyed by their own players, the community, the long-term players, which then in turn come around and complain that there's no one playing the game. Now, th this is a vicious cycle, and it happens in a lot of games that the, the long-term players, they're bored, they start harassing the new players, they leave, and then they're left alone, and then they leave the game as well. And it's them themselves destroying the game, where the game is actually 
I would say pretty good. Some of them are even brilliant. But the people that happen to cluster into that game, they're destroying it from the inside out. Where usually most games are destroyed from the outside in, from bad publicity and some things like that. But it's really sad when the players destroy the game from inside by harassing new players, but don't let them grow, don't give them the space. And at the same time, when companies don't protect the new players as well, because they don't care. Well, he did pay his subscription. He did buy a thing from the shop now, a booster. Now we don't care. We got the money. We don't care. We don't care to protect him. And there's also all these little excuses. This is a full PvP game. Okay, dude, it is a full PvP game. But you know what? Until level five, give me some protection to see where my keys go, how things work. Just a little bit, you know? A level one, getting ganked by a level, I don't know, 60 or 100 uh, on the first five minutes just outside town the guy doesn't know what's out here dead goes out again all right let's try this again out dead i mean give him you know a couple of freaking days to adjust to your game you know um you could say yeah maybe this game is not for him but you know what everybody that enjoys pvp doesn't necessarily mean that they are geniuses and pick up the game in an instant or they have researched the game or how to play it, and what build, and what gear, and all this. So, it is my personal opinion, closing this podcast, that companies do not care about the player base in any form. They care about the money, and how easy it is for them to do things, by restricting access, making it hard to do things that are going to make them work, and uh, making it even harder for you to enjoy your game when you've been, you know, harassed or other people using hacks and things like that, reducing the fun you can have in the game, reducing uh, accessibility, and make it more of a frustrating experience uh, overall. Um, I hope that some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you may have experienced this. Anyways, these uh, podcasts are about me taking things off my chest about things that I see and hopefully give some food for thought for you guys. Um, and that's all that's all I had to say on this topic I hope to see you guys on the next one and before closing this just like they again a big thank you to all the Patreons that are supporting us uh, to keep doing this and also to invite every single one of you to join us on Twitch on Fixit TV for some live gaming and chatting and chill together have a great day